started when I was exploring the style systems. What style systems? Oh, well, Kitchener's Essences, of course. See all the trouble you've started? Well, let's try to clear that up, shall we? Okay, the ingenue essence, also known as the youthful essence. What is it? How do you embrace this essence? And do you actually have it? We're going to go over everything you actually need to know about the ingenue essence. So essences, where did they come from? They were originally created by a man named John Kitchener, who's part of Personal Style Consultant. Now PSC has been around since the 60s, but he didn't create the essence system until the 80s, right around the time that David Kibbe was creating Metamorphosis. So the essence system, similar to David Kibbe's body system, explores your balance of yin and yang. Bell Northrup first contextualized the concept of yin and yang and applied it to physical aspects, both in nature and in the body. So yang being straight, angular, sharp, yin being soft, rounded, curved. Over the decades, there were more people who explored this system and applied it in different manners. In Grace Morton's book, The Art of Costume and Personal Appearance, she explored it in the 1950s in a slightly outdated way. And then we have Harriet McJimsey, who laid out the seven main families and applied the yin and yang system to physical attributes of the body. And you can see that here. Now, I don't wanna to focus too much on Kibbe, but I do wanna explain the different systems and how they interweave with one another and what concepts overlap so that you can get a better understanding of things. So David Kibbe has five main families. He has dramatics, naturals, classics, gamines, and romantics. So see who's missing? Well, Kitchener decided to keep the ingenue category from McJimsey's original text. And he actually added a seventh category, the angelic essence, which I do a deep dive into on this video here. So let's look at the initial concept of the ingenue and the first concrete description of it that I could find was in Harriet McJimsey's book. So let's go through the physical characteristics she applied to it. Here we can see the ingenue is described as having a below average height, a build that is small, dainty, and delicate. The ingenue posture is described as something like this, graceful, ballet posture, head tilted, appealing, and compliant. I'm sorry, what? Okay, <laughs> so clearly that is not only offensive, but very outdated, and I don't think any of us should be aiming for that as a style essence. This is probably why Kibbe decided to remove the ingenue category, and describing anyone as compliant leaves a super bad taste in my mouth. Ugh. No! Ugh. But let's continue on because I think there's a modern day evolved ingenue category that can be applicable to some and not downright insulting. So McJimsey continues on to say they have a lot of width between their eyes, they have rounded cheeks, they have rosebud or bow-like lips. For noses, they often appear dainty or fine boned. Yes, I'm already out on that one. Their coloring tends to be light and fair, and they also appear youthful or look young. So we can see where ingenue has a place in the typing system, right? These qualities exist in the world. From what I've read and heard, Kibbe decided to remove the ingenue category because he kind of felt like grown women mimicking a young girl or a youthful appearance. Kitchener decided to keep it. Let's go over what Kitchener believes makes the ingenue essence. So Kitchener calls the ingenue essence also the youthful essence. And now remember, Kitchener believes that you have more than one essence, that you have a blend of technically up to all seven, but that's more rare. So in Kibbe, you are one ID. In Kitchener, you are a blend of all the options. Ingenue is described as small scale yin. And Kitchener still offers typing services. I will link that in the description below. So where does Ingenue fall on the yin scale? It is the second most yin essence, angelic being the most yin. So Kitchener relies more heavily on the face than the body to type. And I wanna be clear that you don't need all of the following characteristics to be considered ingenue. It's more about the holistic view. Now having an ingenue essence as your main dominant essence, meaning it's 50% or more, is more rare. You're a special idealistic type. Having ingenue as a tertiary or secondary essence is a bit more common, so keep that in mind. So let's go over the physical characteristics that Kitchener applies to the ingenue category. It does have some overlap with McJimsey's. He describes the ingenue essence as having a short body or a petite body. They have round faces or heart-shaped faces. Now, one of the main traits for the ingenue essence is widespread apart eyes. 
Kitchener says they can oftentimes be green. The quality of the eye can also have this pupil ring around it here. You find that in a lot of younger children, which is why if it carries over to adult, that can be a small indicator that you have ongenu essence in your blend. Again, one trait won't eliminate this essence for you and one single trait won't confirm it for you. So holistic view, people. So he describes the ingenue essence as having an idealistic, sweet, almost naive feeling to them. But honestly, this is not a personality test and you could be a total badass bitch and still have ingenue essence in it. So the ingenue essence oftentimes tends to embrace their inner child and some of the imagery associated with the ingenue essence, as Kitchener describes it, is as follows. He equates them with things like delicate china patterns, bows, wreaths, miniature things, decorative details, sweets like these, getting a very Wes Anderson Grand Budapest hotel vibe from it like this. He also mentions uh, English cottages or Victorian gingerbread houses. So I hope this is ho helping you paint the picture of the ingenue vibe. So some celeb examples that Kitchener has described as having ingenue essence are the following. Marilyn Monroe, Emma Stone, Michelle Williams, Meg Ryan, Leslie Manville, and Betty White. Betty White also has a gamine essence, so don't worry. As we go, I'll provide more diverse examples of the ingenue essence and examples of some of the blends. So if you notice, Kitchener put Marilyn Monroe in his ingenue category. Now, Kibby used Marilyn Monroe as his premier romantic example. So what gives? Well, remember Kibby is all about how fabric drapes over the body and he doesn't take the face into consideration anymore. And really the accommodations of the romantic could fit any style, including the ingenue look that we're going for. And to be fair, I think Marilyn Monroe has a dominant ingenue essence, but she may have romantic in her blend as a small percentage as well. Hollywood really engineered Marilyn to be an ingenue romantic, sexy and cute. Now, if we look back to her Norma Jean days and some of the photos here, we can really see that she has an ingenue dominant essence. And it's not just because she's young, but it's because she identifies all of the traits of the ingenue. And we can see that Hollywood really sculpted the sexiness that she exemplified. And we can talk about the ethics of that later. And if you wanna see a modern day example of this, I think that Scarlett Johansson is another great example in her essence. And she has a feminine girly quality about her, a youthfulness, but she also can look very sexy and have that mature yin, which romantics are known for. So yes, romantic and ingenue can coexist in the same person. How do you dress for an ingenue essence? Well, we're going to go over all the options that you have, but remember that essentially all of these systems are trying to harmonize your physical traits and your clothing. We wanna create a harmonious relationship between the two. So what is the ingenue? It's small scale yin. So they're going to do well with a lot of small scale soft details, smaller scale floral prints, smaller scale ruffles, smaller scale bows, all of those small scale decorative elements are perfect for the ingenue category. And just to note, on an everyday basis, you can choose to dress with harmony or with juxtaposition, and both are completely valid ways of expressing yourself. And understanding the difference can be incredibly helpful with your personal style. These suggestions here are going to be to dress in harmony with your ingenue essence. Something like this would be juxtaposition because you're creating something that is outwardly the opposite of your body. Still very effective, still a really cool concept. We just wanna train our eyes to see the difference. So let's continue on. So some silhouettes that work well for the ingenue essence would be smaller scale silhouettes. They can do things like shrugs. They think, can do things like empire waists or baby doll silhouettes. They have smaller bodies oftentimes, so those small scale details and small scale silhouettes work really well for them. And light colored laces are also excellent. Kitchener describes the ingenue as having an innocent love of the past, so they can do some vintage influences like this and like this. Bows and ruffles are a mainstay in the ingenue category as well. So if you watched the previous video about the angelic essence, you know that their go-to silhouette is the floaty draped dress. Well, the ingenue equivalent of that is the short flouncy dress. If you can pull off a short flouncy dress and not look absolutely ridiculous, you may have ingenue in your blend. 
the dainty flouncy silhouette is perfect for the ingenue vibe. You can see someone like Lupita Nyong'o or Emma Stone, they look beautiful in the short flouncy dress. It looks in harmony with them. Whereas someone like Julia Roberts, who has a romantic natural essence, looks silly in a short flouncy dress. She doesn't wear a lot of them and it's probably because something looks off about it. It just doesn't fit with her body type. It doesn't fit with her essence. And here we can see Julia Roberts in another shorter dress, but this dress has a little bit more of a mature yin feel. The color, the darkness, the vibe, it veers more romantic than ingenue, which is why it looks better than this dress on her. So when you're evaluating whether a piece is truly ingenue or might veer more mature yin, you wanna look at it from head to toe and evaluate how it feels. Does it feel dainty and delicate and youthful or does it have a more sexy, mature vibe about it? And in terms of accessories, things that are miniature or smaller in scale tend to do well. Again, your body small scale yin, Accessories is also small scale yin. Smaller scale gems, small charms like this. And some pieces that have an antique feel can also work for the ingenue vibe. But for shoes, Kitchener advises Mary Jane's or ballet flats. Now he says that pointed shoes rarely work for, for the ingenue essence, but I think that's getting a little nitpicky. And I think that here and here, they look great on women with an ingenue essence. I think that the shoe is far enough away from their face that it doesn't overwhelm or feel too sharp. Find your own ways to modernize the system. You're going to find that there is some overlap in some of these suggestions, but that's where the head to toe comes in because really the designer, when they're designing these items, is not thinking this is only for the ingenue essence. So you have to start looking at it and start to figure out how it works for your body and how it works for the outfit and if you're creating the harmony you wanna create with it. And you wanna be able to train your eyes so that you can see where the piece leans. Does this piece lean a little bit more natural or does it lean a little bit more ingenue? This leads me to fabric weight. I think fabric weight is incredibly important in all of these systems and I don't think it gets talked about enough. Ingenue is going to have a lighter visual fabric weight because it leans more yin. It's gonna be softer edges to harmonize with your body. So while you don't have to go super floaty, light, airy, fairy goddess like the angelic, you're going to want to do pliable, soft fabrics. And if you go to moderate weight fabrics, you still want them to have a crispness to them but not overly sharp. Now in terms of color palette, ingenues do really well with the lighter scale of the colors. They're going to do pastels, they're going to do creams and whites, and they're gonna leave the high contrast and the playful quirky colors and the high saturation colors to the more yang dominant essences. And when we talk about heavier weight fabrics for the ingenue essence, I think that you can take a lot of inspiration from vintage influences. So you can see the textured softness in this vintage coat, and you can see the truncated silhouette, which would work well for the more petite size bodies of the ingenue. And for knitwear, you could do crochet patterns like this or fair out patterns like this. Both would work well for the ingenue category. Now let's talk about how this works with your Kibbe ID. I wanna remind you that these are two different systems. Now, if Kibbe isn't working for you, that is totally a fine. Kibbe is just one potential tool in your style toolbox. And it's possible that your project, your style project, doesn't need that tool. But if you figured out your Kibbe ID and you find it helpful, but you believe Ingenue is a dominant part of your essence blend, let's go over some outfits on how they all can meld together. Okay, let's do a dress and a jean outfit for each of the 10 Kibbe IDs. I think this dress works for a dramatic body and an ingenue leaning essence. It's narrow, maintains vertical, the pattern isn't too small but still feels ingenue, and it has a few decorative details in the sleeve. For a jean outfit, we want to have a narrow, sharper silhouette and to maintain vertical, which this does. We have a v-neck and pointed ballet flats, similar colors in top and bottom, and the angular yet youthful bobby pin hair, and miniature bar earrings. So we're combining the sharpness with the small scale details and trying to find the balance. For soft dramatics, their dress has a larger scale antique print, gentle curve accommodation, and gathering at the waist, and the vertical is intact. The jean outfit still has the glamour of an SD, but with a more youthful edge. This blouse might not work for every SD, but remember only you can decide how much you lean into an essence or remain steadfast in your Kibbe ID. Here's a great FN slip dress with an open neckline, girly color, and some decorative small scale trim, vertical and width accommodations intact. For an FN jean look, an open neckline and a similar contrast levels between jeans and the print maintains vertical. This print might be a bit smaller scale for the flamboyant natural, but I think the rest of the outfit balances it out. Square toe ballet toes for a bit more bluntness. 
For a soft natural, the dress has an open neckline, light waist emphasis, and a shorter hem. And for the jeans outfit, we're going with mom jeans and a soft wrap blouse with simple flats, accommodating with curve, but still ingenue with the details and prints. For the DC, we're gonna go with a more Chanel style suit. I added two because some DCs may not like the cropped hemlines in this outfit, but it, but it feels classic and put together, sharper edges, yet still youthful. DC's jean outfit leans into girly classic with moderate clean straight jeans, a light lace blouse, and the sharp shaped bow bag. Soft classic shaped dress in a pastel lace color with soft waist emphasis. While this could also be considered a bit more soft gamine, I think it leans a little more classic with the shape and structure and moderate length. Soft classic jean outfit. Tuck in the blouse for soft waist emphasis, classic accessories that have an ingenue flair and an overall balanced look. Flamboyant gamine dress. More staccato in shape, leans into the ingenue with the retro vibes, with the scalloped hem and the collar shape. Flamboyant gamine jeans outfit has cropped skinny jeans with a perfect ingenue blouse and flats. Add a belt for more horizontal breaks and a fun charm bracelet for the ingenue's love of miniature details. Soft gamine, tailor made for the ingenue style. Girly puff sleeve dress that accommodates curve and petite. And their casual look. Small scale details, small scale proportions, youthful essence. TR dress, ruching, antique print, puff sleeves, add in a belt for a bit more waist emphasis. And a TR jean look, high waist skinny jeans that crop above the ankle to show off your curves with this frilly fitted ingenue top and heel. Add in a belt for more waist emphasis. And the Kibby romantic dress, waist emphasis, room for double curve and for curves to breathe, puff sleeves and an antique print. For the jeans outfit, I chose lightweight pleated jeans that taper at the ankle, allowing your double curve to breathe and have room, which is what Kibby says it should be. Paired with this ruffle puff sleeve blouse with waist emphasis and a cute pair of retro heels. Okay, I hope that was helpful in showing you that Kibby is not meant to box you in and it can really work with any style. And in this case, it can work well with the ingenue essence. Those outfits were really just more for inspiration. They were just to start connecting the dots of how ingenue essence can work with each of the individual Kibbe IDs and their accommodations. But let's talk about how to integrate Ingenue Essence into your daily life, because that's the goal, right? We're not dressing for some fictitious lifestyle that we might have in our dreams. We're dressing for our everyday lifestyle. And this is where the head to toe concept comes in. Now, Kibbe uses this term a lot. I will point out that he did not invent this term. It's basically evaluating how does everything work together? Does this outfit work for the event you're going to or for your daily, the day that you have in front of you? How do the fabrics relate to one another? Do they all meld together or do they create juxtaposition? How do they work with your individual proportions? So outfit, harmony, you, together. Get it? And I will emphasize that I think it is super important that your outfits that you create actually work for your lifestyle. I think Kibby is especially guilty of this, of kind of creating this imaginary woman with this imaginary lifestyle where she never has to walk a city street or chase after a toddler, and the outfits or the suggestions are sometimes not totally applicable to all. So make sure these outfits work for your lifestyle. So I want you to focus less on all of the suggestions that I just said and more about the head to toe look. We're gonna learn to train our eyes to see the difference of what's working and what's not. So let's look at some ingenue essence head to toes that would work for real life. Here are some outfit ideas for the fall for the ingenue essence. And here are some outfit ideas for the winter. Note, you don't have to use pastel colors or these colors exactly. You just don't want the overall look to be too heavy or dark. And for athletic wear, the same principles apply. Pastels are an easy choice, small scale florals, added decorative details when you can find them like here and here and anything that has a lighter feel to it. Curved seams can also be effective too. Now, you may have ingenue in your blend, but you want to appear a bit more mature looking, which is when you can lean into the other essences to mature your look. Here we have Priyanka Chopra leaning into her romantic essence, but still having touches of ingenue. And here we have Asia Naomi King. She's, she's leaning a bit more classic here, and in this outfit, maybe a touch of classic and ingenue mixed with gamine here. And with Betty White, we see the classic influence and gamine influence as well. You can also add in a neutral color palette or a classic influence to mature your look. And here we can see Emma Stone darkens up her palette a bit and adds a bit of classic to the mix to make her ingenue essence a bit more mature. Same with Alexis Bledel in this more classic color palette and silhouette. Liv Tyler pairs an ingenue blouse with classic trousers for a more mature look. And Scarlett Johansson takes an ingenue style dress in a tan color to make it a little less girly. Even if you don't have classic essence, sometimes implementing a little bit of classic style pieces 
can help mature your ingenue look a bit. And don't forget about your hair. Kiersey Clemens matures her look a bit by opting for a more controlled classic hairstyle and a bit more retro makeup instead of the more youthful look here. So as you can see, it does not need to be literal. It does not need to be you walked out of Alice in Wonderland because you have the ingenue essence. No. You can take that same youthful energy, the daintiness, and translate it into your outfits or portions of your outfits. So that leads me to hair and makeup for the ingenue. Again, these are just suggestions, they're not rules. For hairstyles, I would suggest anything from like chin length to moderate length. Those seem to be popular choices. And you want something soft and fluffy to kind of harken back to that small scale yin, but you don't want to go too sexy with it. Something like this works. Something like this might be a little bit more romantic. Rounded shapes and hairstyles tend to also work well, but they shouldn't be overly polished. And if you really want to lean into that youthful look, you could do pigtails or braids. But I want to be clear that we are certainly not encouraging anyone to look like a little girl. Hair accessories can be especially effective, but there's a spectrum to them. You could go more youthful and do barrettes or headbands or hair bows. There's a range and that's why the head to toe is important. You have to figure out where you want to fall along the spectrum. And I think it's important to note that this is kind of where the head to toe concept comes in and this can make or break your outfit. So you can either lean into the ingenue for your full head to toe look, or if you have some other elements in your blend, you need to figure out how you wanna work those in. But either way, you really need to fully commit to the aesthetic vibe you're giving. Now let's talk about makeup. If you're going more full ingenue, you want a girliness, a youthfulness, a daintiness, a delicateness about your makeup. You'll want to avoid the sharper, harsher contouring or any sharp or super geometric lines within your makeup. We want to avoid something like this, which has more of a yang influence in it and would overwhelm the soft shapes that the ingenue essence has in their face. So super smoky eyes, super contoured cheeks, probably not ingenue essence. For lips, soft lip colors, blotted lips or blended lips like this, soft glosses are all great for the ingenue. And you wanna keep the colors more light if you're going full ingenue. So because ingenues have these big, beautiful eyes, mascara and eye makeup can be super effective. This style of mascara would be beautiful on an ingenue. Really highlight their big round eyes. You could also do a small winged eyeliner, something like this that has a more vintage element to it. But you want to avoid something like this that feels a little bit more sharp and dramatic. Blush can also be super effective for the ingenue essence, rosy cheeks, round cheeks, something soft and delicate. And for days where you don't really want to spend time doing your makeup, I say go with a fresh face. Maybe just throw on a soft light lip shade and you're good to go. Again, we wanna pair these suggestions with your lifestyle and express you. So no boxes, just tools to consider. Okay, now the real question is, do you have ingenue essence within your blend? Let's go over how to test out your essence. Again, if you wanna get typed professionally by John Kitchener, I have the link in my description below, but if you're on a self-exploration journey, how should you approach it? I have a very specific opinion on this, and I honestly think that unless you're getting professionally typed by Kitchener himself, not just anyone, that you should really just focus on your three dominant essences. When you have 5% of an essence blend, which Kitchener could you know, determine for you, that really only equates to like a shoelace in your outfit. So while it's interesting information to have, your main three dominant essences are really going to be the ones that can move the needle in terms of your overall aesthetic. So how do you test them out? Well, I wanna be clear. I think that you should test out one essence at a time. If you do them all at once, if you think you have ingenue, gamine, ethereal in your blend, and you try to test them all at once, you're gonna muddy the waters. You're not gonna know what part of the outfits are working and what parts aren't. And it's going to be hard to determine the percentage of each of those in your blend. So if you're testing out ingenue essence, go into your closet and go through your accessories and your shoes and all of those elements and start pulling out anything that could work for the ingenue category. And what you're going to do is you're going to try them on in varying degree. I don't wanna hark on you, but I'm going to say it again. Take your daily outfit photos or videos of, the, of this process. Where do you start? You're gonna start with something small, ingenue earrings, ingenue hair accessories, something that is a smaller interpretation of the ingenue essence. Take a photo, take a video. And then the next day, you're gonna add on a little bit more ingenue, something like a shoe or a blouse. And then the next day you could try your flouncy short dress, and then the next day you're gonna do a full ingenue look. Start evaluating how harmonious does it look? How much does it match your personal vibe? Does it express your personal style? Now, in my original video of essences, I asked you guys to guess my essence, and so many of you guys said I had ingenue essence. 
So let's test if it actually is a true ingenue essence or if it is a romantic essence. So I am going to caveat that the romantic essence is one of the most misunderstood essences. Both of these women have romantic essences in their blood. Romantic is a mature yin. Ingenue is a small scale yin. So be sure when you're picking out your test items that they don't lean too mature. So let's look at how the more small scale yin works on me. potential that I could have ingenue in a very, very small percentage of my blend. I think that some of the hair bows look nice on me. I think some of the dresses work, but let's look at how I look in this dress, an ingenue style dress. I would say that I look a little bit more mature looking and not so youthful. I think this commenter hit the nail on the head. I do look good in some yin details and I can pull off some yin elements, despite the fact that I identify as a flamboyant natural in the kibbe world. I think, however, mature yin suits me better, or I tend to make small scale yin look a little bit more mature, if that makes sense. I'm not saying I'm a sexy queen. I am no Sofia Vergara. I'm not saying that at all. But this is where we have to understand the small scale yin versus the mature yin. McJimsey describes the romantics as looking over 20, but never old. And I think that kind of tracks for me. I don't think physically my traits work well with the small scale yin. The antique prints, the floral prints that look best on me, the elements that look best on me have a more mature yin quality to them. Do we agree? That being said, I do think maybe ingenue could be maybe like 8% of my blend. I'm never going to wear a full ingenue look, but I do like hair bows. So maybe that's the tiny bit of ingenue sneaking through. So. You figured out your percentages, you figured out your three dominant essences, or you've been professionally typed by Kitchener. What do you do with it? How do you build a look around it? Okay, so 10 to 15% of an essence can be used for a smaller element within your look. Something like an accessory, a shoe, maybe your makeup, but it's not going to be a dominant part of your outfit. Any essence between 20 and 40% about is going to be used for one garment within your outfit or one section of your outfit. And if you've got 50% of an essence or more, then it can be used for the full outfit. To be clear, when I said that my essences, I believed were romantic, dramatic, and natural, I actually think they're almost about 30, 30, and 30. Maybe romantic 35, maybe natural 30, but we'll get into the natural essence shortly because again, I think that one's very misunderstood too. Okay, so let's get a more diverse look of how the ingenue essence can appear. So let's go through the ingenue essence blends. And here are a few more notable people who also definitely have ingenue somewhere within their blend. Okay, so I hope that helped clarify and modernized the ingenue essence for everyone and it helped give you some clarity on whether or not you have the ingenue essence in your blend. Also, if you feel like I missed any topics within the ingenue category or you need some more information about a specific element to the essence system, please leave it in the comments below because I'm always trying to improve my content and give you everything you need to find strength through style and find your authentic voice through your clothes. Until next time.